Invading the Internet covering Web 2.0, coast to coast, worldwide, and everywhere in between. This is where you put the social in social media. We are Social Blade. Yes, we are Social Blade. This is the speed episode. We're going to try to do this as quickly as possible because we're 30 minutes late. So let's get started. Episode number 71, by the way, for those who don't don't keep track. Um, I do keep track and everybody keeps track for me and that's why they put it in the notes so that I don't, I don't forget that this is episode 71. This is the Social Blade Show where we talk about social media and take it to the extreme, take it so far above and beyond what any other show does that people actually think that we might have a, a problem with the oxygen way up there in the sky. Luckily, we brought our air tanks. I am J.D. Rucker, one of the co-hosts of the Social Blade Show. I'm Erin Ryan. I'm Jason Ergo. And I'm Jeff Kreider. And we are... We're, we're going to just, just jump right in, and this week was just, just absolutely, positively, completely awesomely jam-packed with social media news, including uh, um, workout news. This is not Jane Fonda. This is not Richard Simmons. This is Jeff Kreider, who's going to talk to us about the social media strategist's workout. Yes. So those of us who are on the show and watching the show who are social media strategists who work in social media probably know that what a... One of the uh, most important things uh, is to come up with a routine and to stick with the routine, because if you don't come, either come up with it or stick to it, it, you can be get pretty lost. I mean, you you can lose your way pretty quickly, especially with the vastness of social media. And you know, sometimes you know the job really demands you know uh, initiative, looking at new frontiers, pioneering different things, innovating. Um, so if you don't really have a routine laid out in front of you, it can get pretty overwhelming, and you can get pretty lost. I mean, you know, before I kind of set up my routine, I mean, there would be times where I'd sit there with my mouth gaping open, drooling, you know, just clicking through the browsers. But, you know, I, I uh, got smart. I started to hash out a routine and I stuck to it, which was interesting when I when I stumbled across this article that was actually written um, a couple weeks ago about the social media strategist workout. And it really laid out his, his, um, his routine from, you know, when he wakes up in the morning to when he goes to bed. And, you know, not so, not so much talk about um, you know, the article, but talk about, you know, our routines, like what is your routine and how did you come up with your routine? So, uh, you know, I know JD, Aaron, you guys work in social media. Um, ergo, you're more in the uh, telephony field, but uh, you also are, are big in social media personally. So, uh, you know, starting with Aaron, what type of routine do you set yourself up for? When it comes to social media, um, I always try to stick to certain websites that I know are credible. And, you know, I check those. The first thing I do is always check those and see what's going on in the social media world. And to strategize it, you know, in a sense where I can constantly re relate to people. I want to be able to communicate with people on a human level and not just spew stuff at them all the time. So I think my strategy is always trying to stay human and always trying to think of the person who's just starting a Facebook profile, just starting on Twitter, just creating a Facebook page for the first time, and trying to keep that in mind with everything that I do within social media. What do you do, Jeff? Well, I wake up <clears throat> at a brisk and early uh, 8 o'clock, and I read my Google Reader, and I check up on all the what's going on on my Google Reader, and I check the Google Alerts that I've set for my business and my personal brand, and I check all those things. I check how we did um, analytic-wise, you know, for our for our websites, our various sites, and see what what worked and what didn't work the day before. Um, then I show up to work at 10 o'clock. Uh, yeah, I work the awesome hours of 10 to 6, uh, but I show up at 10 o'clock, and. <clears throat> I have a short meeting with uh, with my boss, uh, kind of just laying out the next couple weeks, and we do that um, pretty much every other day, every three days. Um, and then I open up all the social media properties that we have, or all of our web properties, and I go over each and every one of them. Um, and I spend the morning hours um, either coming up with uh, like blogging ideas. I'll hit stumble upon for about a half hour to 45 minutes and come up with a bunch of things to like and kind of keep my stuff in the funnel. Um, and recently I've tried to, in the early in the morning, try to start writing and blogging. So that's something that I, uh, for, for uh, the business, just kind of writing stuff um, in the morning. And then the afternoon I usually have meetings that I have to do. Um, and then the, 
in the afternoon, I spend that time kind of strategizing um, and, you know, coming up with new ideas, coming up with processes to fill out. I mean, we have a list of things that we want to accomplish in 2010. Um, there are also things that I, I'm trying to accomplish for another company that I'm doing some consulting for. So uh, that I spend the afternoon doing that type of stuff. All the while, all the social media channels are kind of opened up, um, and I'm always constantly monitoring those things. Uh, and then in the evening, um, try to take some time away and just kind of watch television, you know, talk with a girlfriend. Um, and then before I go to bed, um, I just do some more reading and some more research and uh, do some more um, implementation, whether it's writing or um, uh, just continually coming up with more strategy of what I did in the, uh, in the uh, earlier in the afternoon. Uh, and then I do it all over again. Wow, you're really breaking it down. <laughs> More yeah. banter asks, wants to ask Jeff a question here. Do you prioritize uh, being first or, sorry, first or being creative when it comes to blogging? Do you prioritize ebbing first or being creative when it comes to blogging? Being what first. Is... Being first. It was a typo. I think it's being, yeah. Yeah. Do you prioritize <clears throat> being first or being creative when it comes what to blogging? What do you blogging? mean? He, I think he means when you, oh, if you're going to be the begin, first to break a new. Begin first. He's oh. correcting himself again. Begin first. Do you begin first? Oh, oh breaking news. Yeah, I okay. So when it comes to what I, what I do for blogging, more so for my business, yeah, I try to sometimes. Um, there, there's a healthy mix of it. So I try to catch things when it first kind of happens and then not break it, but you know, either repurpose it or try to find a press release and, and do that. But there are also, we have a group of content writers who do a lot of unique stuff, and I try to do the same thing. Um, when I'm using stumble, excuse me, when I'm using stumble upon, I'll try to find unique and, and funny things and then either repurpose that, share that. Um, but you know, it's, it's a healthy mix of both more so right now on the creative side, cause we have a lot of neat things that are in the pipeline that we're really trying to work on and hash out. Um, so right now it's trying to think of more on the creative side, but it's a healthy mix of both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, my, I guess I, you planned out your strategy so well, but I just I, or your day so well. Uh, mine's not nearly as organized as that. I, I basically I, I wake up. My day is more surrounded or, or comprised of YouTube and Twitter. I don't do social media like you said for a job, but I you know I wake up and I try to see what comments people have done on uh, my videos or check out maybe a couple other people's videos there and uh, leave some comments on those. And throughout the day, uh, I sort of monitor Twitter, uh, at least as I can on a second monitor, just uh, while I'm doing my work. Um, and then during the even in the evening or later in the day, if I have some free time, I might you know go back and forth checking some comments. And then I am doing a video a day, so I gotta film a video in the evening, do uh, the editing on that, get it ready to upload to YouTube, and then um, just you know just check out other videos, Twitter, Facebook and the news on various sites also so <laughs> i don't know yeah i don't think i need to break down my day yeah. I, I i live on twitter and facebook all day <laughs> that's basically it i give myself a bit of a break at night time I, I thought you were looking for like an overall strategy yeah. not like break down yeah you had like hour by hour <laughs> i can't do that <laughs> and then i stopped to have a kit cat bar <laughs> and jd what's your strategy i'm i'm still trying to process jeff's <laughs> <laughs> Ergo, Ergo spent an hour and a half watching a uh, watching a, a day, a day and a year, a year and a day. We just heard a year. Life in a day. Life, <laughs> life in a day. day. We just heard, we just heard Jeff's Jeff's entire life in three minutes. Amazing. <laughs> and now we're just we're giving you we're giving you crap, Jeff. Oh, that was amazing because we do know that your your structure and your style has mm -hmm. been uh, exceptionally exceptionally effective for what you do. Um, mine Which is. D. <laughs> Well, no, I'm just saying it's a, it's, it's, it's for, for what you do. I mean, what you've been able to accomplish, you need to be a lot more, a lot more focused, a lot more, more structured. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. My, my technique is actually kind of funny. Is that <clears throat> I, I just go around looking for things from at all the different places. I go to Tech Meme, Mashable, Tech Crunch, start looking for, for what's going on. It's usually, usually early. Um, and from there, assuming that I'm not late for a meeting, and then from there, I start opening up tabs 
and these tabs usually stay open, and the whole goal is to close out all the tabs during the day. <laughs> That's just in case there's a crash that is unrecoverable. I always take something that's truly, truly, truly <laughs> got to make sure that I, that I read this or, or engage with it or test it out. I take that and put it in my bookmarks. But otherwise, you know, I'll open up and it sometimes, uh, and I actually saw this on the Firefox report the other day because I'm, I'm using Firefox for beta, and it'll actually show you your activity. There was a, at one point where I had 143 uh, separate tabs open at one time. Um, and as I'm opening them, then I'll go through, check them out uh, when the, the appropriate time comes, and, and then I'll, I'll close them out once I get my ideas, get the concepts, find something to investigate, dismiss, or, or whatever. I'm still trying to figure out the whole telephony thing. I had no idea that Ergo was telepathic. That, uh, that blows my mind. No, th that's what you so, call it. It works in the All right. Is this, isn't it? I, work I know, but I, no. that's why I said... I telephony is the no, right. Was telepathic. Yes. It was <laughs> Not telepathic. Joke. It was. Uh, it was just a failed. I, I failed got you, JD. That, if you were watching, I, I I worked with it for you. Well, that's okay because I I have many of those. So. <laughs> oh, I I was I was I was bad, but no. So um, everybody, the the key point here, the takeaway that I, I believe comes is base <laughs> you know base your workout, base your strategies around how. You know what is what is most effective for you. I know that there are some people that have, and I've actually attempted this one day, and it, it only lasted for about two hours. But um, I was told by one one guru, one expert, that you know 95% of what they learn, read, or do regarding Facebook in particular comes from Facebook itself. They explore Facebook constantly throughout the day. Um, not going to Facebook blogs, not going to, to Mashable, not going to, to anything like that. They're actually on Facebook, and they let Facebook guide their their strategies, not just seeing what people are doing, but you'll, you know, if it's about Facebook, it's something big, something in social media that's coming up. Facebook is a very good venue for that as well. So, um, which could also be applied to Twitter. So, who. Now, there's a lot of insight so, in what you just said, though. Because yeah. the same thing, like, that happens to me, but for more of the SEO side, where, I mean, I'll read a ton of stuff on SEO, uh, and then I'll just, like, blow my mind away and overthink things. Then I'll be like, JD, make sense of this for me. And he'll be like, Jeff, you're overthinking this. And I'll just, you know, yeah, and like pull my hair out instead of just like applying it and just doing it yourself and figuring it out yourself. So now there's a lot of there's a lot of insight and wisdom into what you just said. No, thank you. I stole it from somebody else. So um, <laughs> you read it somewhere, I, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I am. Uh, I am telephonic. So took it straight from the mind of, of of Aaron Ryan. So speaking of the the Ryan, tell us, Aaron. What are hyper alerts? And notice I said it really slow because I'm trying to, you know, the, the standard lead-in would be, what are hyper alerts? Ah! Yeah, exactly. But but I did the opposite. It's, it's, it's breaking subtle, the stereotype. Subtle, subtle drama breaking the stereotype. Aaron, hyper alerts. <laughs> Wet hyper eyes, alerts. dry <laughs> eyes. Hyper alerts should be called happy alerts. I'm really liking this tool. You know, a lot of people have been complaining about not being able to receive emails via their Facebook page, cough, ergo. <laughs> yes. Um, er ergo has complained a lot about that. And you know what? He's not the only one. I'm sure some of you out there can agree. Um, you know, Facebook has been really lacking in making sure that you're able to access various venues on Facebook from your email. They've allowed you to do it for some time now in regards to profiles, but not pages. However, you don't have to wait anymore because Hyper Alerts is going to allow you so easily, so simply, and I've posted a post on socialblade.com slash a show um, so you can actually read just the quick how-to. It's so simple. Um, basically what you do is you, you go to their website, you type in the email that you want the alert sent to, and you create a password, and then you sign in and after you confirm the password and that's it you don't create any other account you don't have to fill anything out and that's what i really love about that too um and then once once you're in it just says put in a facebook url and you do and you can then create if you uh if you want to receive alerts hourly daily monthly weekly how often you want it and they used to have as soon as possible but they're working on it right now now remind uh, just remember this that it's in beta so it's, it's still in a work in progress, but so far so good. And what you're also able to do is create what you want to be alerted. So they allow you to have posts, if there's a comment on your page, 
Um, if you put con uh, own content on page, you can also click that off as well and have that alert go to your email. And that's it. It's so simple. So you can keep track of what's going on on Facebook when you're not there. You know, I know it's a lot. Of, it's really frustrating for businesses to go to a page just to check to monitor. And this is really great for sentiment monitoring as well. So you can quickly jump on something if something's happening on your Facebook page. So Ergo has tested as well, uh, you know, alongside me. And Ergo, what, are, what is your feedback on it? I got to say I love it so far. <laughs> yeah, I, so I've, been, so I've been using it uh, for, I think, just a day now. You, you showed it to me yesterday. <laughs> and basically, you know, I, I, I like to reply to people when they post things and comment on things. And just be having to go to Facebook pages all the time was one of the biggest annoyances. Like you get alerts on your profile page on your wall, but the more important place, the actual business type pages, you didn't. So mm -hmm. I, I love this. Um, I, I just can't wait until they get the more servers to make it uh, more real time. The only thing yeah. that kind of scares me is I'm thinking they might start charging for this after beta is over. That, that's kind you know of what? Guess. It's kind of worth it. Facebook hasn't jumped on it. And, you know, I just want to clarify for Pyro Phoenix, Virginia, VA, I'm, I'm assuming it's Virginia. Uh, and you had said, is it a daily summary? And it's not. It's it's well, you can immediate. get you can and get daily ones kind of also. Immediate. You can you get can daily, get daily, ones daily summaries. Want. Yeah. But if you want to get like. Uh, what I have it set to is just, I just want to know what's going on with the comments, what people are saying. So that's the most important thing to me. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's more, it's a little bit more advanced than that. So if I were to go and comment on the Social Blade page right now, I would actually see that in my email. Here's an example right here. I don't know if uh, I can't make it bigger, but um, it, it says, uh, you know, I, I posted on, on my Ergo page uh, something about Oscar nominations and uh yoon left a comment and um I, I got an email letting me know that he uh left a comment here so it's just a very short simple email and you just click to go through to the site there to reply if you wanted to do that but it works really well it yeah nothing bad to say about it right now yeah no it's good so far so we'll keep you posted on what's going on with that but i want to hear what jd and jeff think about it getting daily updates via email they from your facebook page <clears throat> daily updates wouldn't work for me unless you just have so much exposure everywhere that you really can't keep up with it on your wall. Um, but the, the immediate updates, that's very enticing. You know, I, and the reason I say daily updates, you know, if you're just going to get them once a day, you can just go check to see what's happening once a day anyway. The whole idea is that you're getting a notification, you're getting something that's, that's popping up um, wherever you are, you know, telling you, hey, go, go to your Facebook. Because a lot of times, I mean, let's face it, Facebook, you have to monitor a lot of different places sometimes yes. on Facebook. And that makes it impossible. You got groups, you got pages, you get you know you can't you can't always um, keep up with all of that. So being able to get those notifications immediately, that to me is golden. Um, I do hope they 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 charge for this because uh, uh, well, part of me hopes that they do. Part of me um, is writing a story about the whole internet. Well, especially the ID and the Facebook credits yeah. thing combining for the end of the world part. Um, that part doesn't like this, but the, the part about social media period is very, this is very encouraging because, I mean, yeah. this is turning more towards a Facebook style economy. Mm -hmm. Wow. We actually have some people in the audience, Rilip2 says maybe this has already been answered. If Facebook is indexed on Google, how is this any different from Google Alerts? Well, it is different because, you know, Google Alerts comes through, and I've noticed with Google Alerts, you'll get that Facebook or Twitter thrown in there, but it'll be like three days later sometimes, even yeah. though you have it as soon as possible or right away. But the thing is, is that with this, you can have hourly. They have as soon as possible, just on hold right now because they're switching servers. Too many people have demanded it, and they obviously didn't think it was going to become so big. Uh, so quick But this at least. will get you the, what's that? So quick at least. Yeah. You know, um, this will allow you to be able to comment right away, get back as, as, you know, within that hour. That's what I like about it. I don't really need it for daily or monthly or or anything else. I just, the hourly and as soon as possible when that comes back, that would be pretty awesome. I'm looking forward right. to it. And plus, don't forget, you know, don't forget if you are a, if you're a private person, you have your privacy settings, Google won't won't uh, be able to see everything. Um, well, this, this is on the pages. This is on pages. Pages are public anyway. Mm. You can make yeah, it private. I was listening. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> 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 paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. No, but but it, it's really more for, you know, if you post on a wall page, you always get that email there. This is really uh, putting the same feature back in. Will Facebook add this uh, of their own accord later on? I'm guessing probably, but this is really it's filling the hole until then. <laughs> yeah. This is poking. This is poking Facebook, <laughs> telling them really people want this feature, and yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm I'm really happy about it. I like it's that. Really I like that reference to poking Facebook. Exactly. That was <laughs> funny. Very, that was very, clever. Yes. Very now, <laughs> now speaking of poking, the Google almost did the same thing with. Flicking, but in not quite exactly the same. Uh, earlier this week, uh, Google or YouTube more specifically acquired a company called F F L I C K F Flick. I guess it's called Friend Flick or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you actually say it. It's the worst name of a company ever. I think Flick. Flick yeah, <laughs> which I think we. I'm pretty sure I didn't look back, but I think we talked about this company uh, several months ago. <laughs> And we did. Yeah, okay. And what they were doing at the time was they were combing Twitter and sort of recommending movies based off of what your Twitter followers are talking about. And, you know, it, it was able to determine uh, the sen sentiments of, of what they're saying about it and say, you know, if all these people are saying good things about it, then recommend this movie to you because your friends like it. So YouTube is now acquiring this and. It's kind of unclear at the moment on what exactly they're going to do with it, but it could be, you know, combing through the comments on YouTube videos to sort of recommend uh, videos that are rele more relevant to you, something like that. Or it could be also if, if they ever get their act together and transcribe all videos, they might be able to comb through those and uh, recommend things based off of that. But either way, it's going to be they're, they're a, a company that deals a lot with social interactions and uh they're going to be taking the same technology to youtube and basically making youtube more social somehow <laughs> more personal in a way yeah yeah but uh, again it, it's too early to know right at this point they we just know that they're there and uh we'll, we'll have to wait to find out what they're going to do with it well it almost seems like i don't know correct me if i'm wrong almost like i don't want to say stumble upon but in a way like you're just the you're more wrong. stuff you like and the more stuff you comment about, like you, you, you're basically filtering and, and showing Goo or showing YouTube what you like and what you don't like and it recommends like more stuff. Well, they they're doing that right now, yes. Um, but that's just based off of sole interaction of you clicking like, and yeah, you can definitely do a lot with that. Um, it, again, we don't really know what they're going to be doing right now with uh, this technology. It, they said basically they really liked. Um, how this company was doing their work so there's more buying the people than the technology perhaps um it's really to be seen i guess yeah I think um, yeah, the uh the name was so bad yeah. that when i was we were doing our production notes i went back and <laughs> thought it was a typo and changed yeah. it to, changed it to like Flickr or something <laughs> i was like oh wow google acquired Flickr? What, <laughs> what, what's up with that and he was like, was like what do you mean you, you you messed it up i was like how there were like two f's there and you forgot the r <laughs> yeah i was you, like you messed up up real bad. because yeah. nobody nobody would name their company Flick, yeah, you know, fail more like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I mean, I mean, what the flick is that? Oh, um, I said flick. It's legal. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's so bad. So we'll see. I think you're right. I think this is a talent acquisition more so than a technology yeah. acquisition. But we'll see. You know, if uh, if uh, YouTube in integrates it, then um, I will say that I was wrong, <laughs> and I'll blame Mergo. Slick. So, uh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so. Um, and then Ergo will get mad and kill me, and then he'll go to jail. But will once oh, he's in jail, that's will he be able to be? Will so he be able to update his Facebook? That's the question that all Facebook is is asking. Um, Let me talk tough nuts over there. How do people? How how do criminals keep updating Facebook from prison? It's a good question, and. Um, mm -hmm. Virginia Department of Corrections figured out the Facebook page representing Joe. P Parish was being maintained by the convict's family outside of prison while he was serving a 16-year sentence for involuntary manslaughter in connection with the shooting death of some some guy. So, um, so yeah, so so there's your answer. Or is there more to the story? <laughs> well, 
It looks like who was this again? <laughs> this was uh, this was uh. Jo- looks like looks like uh, Joey's Joey's baby's mama gave birth to a baby with a pixelated face. <laughs> <laughs> Joey looks like Tommy Toughnuts over there, you know. <laughs> like, uh, I, like I got a baby in my hair. What you yeah. gonna do about it? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's kind of. That is kind of weird. That's kind of. It's kind of. That's a like, lot. Uh, like, Some really of the weird. status updates that he gave, it was just they were just weird. And what you don't know is the baby's actually running the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's the mastermind behind everything. What were some of the status updates, Aaron, that he gave? It's right on. Had a had a good visit with my sister and Kara. Uh, I'm good. How are you? I have my peeps working my Facebook. LOL. Like how weird is that? I mean, it's just and everybody knows they're in prison, and you know, you come across some of these things, and and some people just don't know, and you, uh, it just I I don't know. Like you can have a cell phone. In prison, I mean, I watch a lot of the jail shows and stuff like that, but this just kind of depletes a little bit more of my faith in the whole prison system more and more. Being it's able like, to invade my Facebook, what? It's my like the lunch lady, lunch lady shorted me my taters. She's completely slowing my roll. Like, <laughs> I can see that as being a status update. <laughs> uh, my only question is, what is uh, what is Aaron doing watching uh, watching prison shows? <laughs> That's I was wondering that too. Plots, the plots now. They're actually no. quite interesting. They're good to watch. They're good to watch. So, but technically speaking, technically uh, speaking, if if you really want to break it down, this goes against Facebook's TOS. Um, the site says you shall not share your password, um, let anyone else access your account, or do anything else that might jeopardize the security of your account. In other words, you're not allowed to get hacked. You're not allowed to let your family update. Fuck your work. While uh, while you're while you're out there, you know, or in there, I should say, and uh, yeah, you know, this is it's against the rules now. Now, is there anything wrong with it? I actually know someone who who is doing the same thing, believe it or not. And um, you know, the 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 person who's updating for him doesn't make a claim, doesn't say, hey, I'm I'm Bob or wh- whatever whatever this gentleman's name is. They say uh, they say no. Um, while while he's offline, I am I am just carrying on his updates, and and so that's it. That's that's what they say. They're they're it's weird. It's kind of odd. You know, um, I've I've seen that too. The thing is, is that if you're if you're a, a sex offender, you're not allowed on Facebook. You're going against Facebook's terms of service. But if you're a criminal, nothing states in the, in the terms of service if you're just a general criminal. Besides besides being a sex offender. Um, you are, it, you're allowed to use Facebook and, you know, should they be, should criminals be allowed? Shouldn't that be written in there that, you know, it's not welcome <laughs> on Facebook? because there's an opportunity to prey on people, especially when you lose your, yeah. Well, your, I think it, de- it depends. I mean, it's the same thing. It's like, okay, if, if, if we feel, if we're releasing them from prison and get, you know, putting them out into the, uh, um, you know, society, I mean, it, uh, I don't know. I mean, if they're convicted of like, you know, child mel- molestation or you know, sexual crimes against you know children, yeah, I would. I don't know. I would ban that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know. That's that's hard. That is really hard. Because what about- what's the difference? What's the difference between stalking someone in person and stalking, right? In, like their Facebook. You know, is it, well, is there's it really- the whole, um, there's the whole you can't kill them. Over Facebook, which <laughs> no, but I mean, but seriously, I don't know where they are on Facebook, I mean, it's not too far. If someone's like stalking like you online, and someone's stalking you in person, I, I think there's, I think the the line there is actually starting to get a little blurred. I'm not gonna comment. What you? I, I mean, you if, you if you feel differently? No, not at all. I just I had something. That came Can to you mind. get a rest- that okay. was really funny and it made me almost crack up and I can't say it live on the air. So that's why I just had to like bust out with a, oh, I'm not going to comment. It had nothing to do with what you said. It was what, what I wasn't going to say. That was hilarious. And I'm still not going to say it. But anyway. Uh, yeah, no. that's um, you're, No, but as far as what you said, yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, there is something very creepy and we have seen, we talked about it in, in the past, how 
how people can be affected by what happens on social media. We've heard of suicides. We've heard of we've heard of uh, of you know murders. We've heard of all kinds of things that happen when when social media. So so yes, to say that to to give a criminal um, the ability to update their Facebook is 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 wrong in my opinion. Um, unless now here's an idea, Mark. If you're listening, you should have a a a like Facebook behind the wall. And then you have like a Facebook page where, where all the inmates can update and talk to each other instead of instead of like talking <laughs> to the real world, you know. And they can even have visitors come into their Facebook page and they can have like virtual conversations there. Ah, I think we're gonna have to. Do, somebody come up with a witty name that combines like um, being being put locked up and uh, and Facebook. So so that's that's your 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 chore your task for the day, audience, ladies, gentlemen, and co-hosts. We're gonna we're gonna make a new startup live on the Social Blade show. It's gonna be Facebook for criminals. Jailbook. 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 Come up with it. You guys think I'm you get you think you think we're kidding here? I'm I'm going to go, Daddy, <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> I like book me, Arnold. That's good. Okay. They're saying, you know, I, I really like that's a good point. You know, if they really want to take advantage of Foursquare, they can become mayor of the jail. We could we could start up my cell. <laughs> my cell. <laughs> <Nice>. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. We, we were talking earlier also, if you do go to jail or at least visit someone in jail, would you check in with Foursquare or Facebook places? Heck yeah. <laughs> Get the inmate badge, or <laughs> I wonder if they should get one. The inmate badge. You, 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 get the, for life. you you get a badge for good behavior. <laughs> you get a badge for. <laughs> you get to collect certain check-ins for shanking, and uh, it can go bad. So um, how about do, we've got do not pass Facebook dot com. That's available. You know, <laughs> You know, go directly to jail. Do not pass Facebook. I think ha- uh, Hasbrook or whoever might uh, have something. Hasbro, to- yeah. Has been. You know, remember Wii Places? That kind of maps out your ch- your check-ins on the timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like it map it out, and then it would stop for like ten years. It would pick up again, and you could see the first place that you checked into after they got out, be like McDonald's. <laughs> Can you imagine? Wow, we found a way. <laughs> We've dived into that story. Yeah, back to Social Blade. <laughs> You know, I, 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 the just story, by the way. Well, hold on, yeah, uh, j- way. Just, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. You actually touched on a, a really interesting idea there. You, you know, uh, these days, all the information that we're putting into these systems, someone twenty years from now actually could go back and really retrace exactly what we're doing all, the, all over the place. You know, really see where somebody we're actually gone. picked up my jail. So really interesting. So is my jail space. <laughs> no, but so, like seriously, no, I mean it's. That's legit. I mean, that's yeah. it's kind of not scary, but it's like, I man, that's, that's real. I mean, that's <laughs> it's kind of funny that you know you could go back and just completely map out someone's like yeah. Facebook check-ins and see where they they've been going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now. Well, you know, I often want I often think about social media as being you know like our stamp in time. It's kind of our stamp. We're going to be able to go back and, and see things that it's like, whoa, remember when. You, know? you remember when we when people used to make time capsules? Yeah. And like hide them away for ten years. I mean, what's the point of that now? I mean, you could just, I mean, your your online tail is so long. Exactly. You could just go back and check out what what happened ten years ago. That that's yeah. In some ways, yeah. What YouTube and all these other things are. I mean, it is your time capsule. I, I mean, all the people like myself that are doing daily videos on there. It's the same type of a thing. It's the, the journal of the twenty first century here. Yeah. I mean, look at Ender. You can just go back to the, or look, go back to the first, I was saying to Jen, watch the, uh, watch the first episode of Social Blade. Mm. You can see, you can see such a difference in, in how we progressed visually and vocally and chemistry and chemistry and all those things, you know, you can see <laughs> the story of Social Blade. It's kind of cool. Flashback. Uh, I'm going to buy convict. Yeah, except books.com. except for the point where you told me that social blade started going downhill when I jumped on. <laughs> oh, dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, who was the one that said that, JD? It, yeah. It, <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> like, yeah, social blade was fun until uh, about May. Uh, isn't that when you showed up, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Thanks, JD. Uh, it's not playing. <laughs> Damn. We were having such a good time back then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then they got uh, all serious. 
Oh, anyway. So, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm, I'm picking up convictbook.com. All right. We're going to well, make this happen. If you are, if <laughs> you ever do check in uh, or to Facebook places from in jail, uh, you want to make sure, though, bring this back on topic here, guys. Just watch this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, th- there's actually a new setting on Facebook that uh, no matter where you check in, especially if you're on Wi-Fi, this is actually really important, seriously. Uh, if you go into your account settings here uh, under account settings, conveniently enough, Facebook added a new privacy setting here that will basically secure all your browser sessions. You, you've heard of HTTPS perhaps before uh, when you're buying things online, you know, you always want to make sure you're using a secure connection. Well, there's sort of been a, a move over the the past years here to make this more broad and uh, have everything encrypted. Uh, The main reason is, um, I don't know if you heard of it, uh, a couple of months ago there was a program released called Fire Sheep. And Fire Sheep, basically anyone that had a laptop capable of, uh, it's called RF monitoring mode. It's basically a a wireless card that has little special privileges in it. Um, You could run that on your laptop and go to like a coffee shop or something. And basically, anyone that uses Facebook, you can take over their Facebook uh, session just by listening on the air. And uh, if you turn on HTTPS on this, it prevents things like that from happening. And it's with FireSheep and similar techniques, it's so easy to do this type of a thing. So absolutely, if you're ever on Wi-Fi, and really, even if you're at home, uh, it's really a good thing to turn on. So again, just go under your Facebook account settings go under the settings then account uh where was it uh, account security and just enable this browse facebook on a secure connection whenever possible uh, they should turn it on by default uh they they just added they this they today or yesterday I, I just got it i think it rolled out last night to everyone um and it might it still might not be there to absolutely everyone i think i looked on uh or earlier today and wasn't there but um it it should be there pretty soon for everyone if it's not there already. Yeah, it's still rolling out. Uh, nice. Well, that that could be. Um, who knows? That could be how Mark Zuckerberg's account got hacked. <laughs> yeah, that that would be funny. Maybe. And then someone would get sued, right? Ah, okay. So Time Suppression says he still doesn't have it yet. Um, just be on the lookout. It should be there soon. Yeah, because like Ergo, you didn't have it yesterday, right? Yeah, I didn't have it yesterday. Um. But uh, it showed up today. And when you, Aaron, you actually brought the story to my attention originally. And I thought it was supposed to be all rolled out by the end of yesterday. But uh, apparently it's not (coughs) yet. So if you don't have it, just keep refreshing every five seconds until you have it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, do you guys remember the uh, the episode where we covered uh, social media policies? Oh, yes. You fired me, right? Yeah, it got, got pretty heated, didn't it? Yes, we we yeah. were all in disagreement. It was all all we were all disagreeing, and then all of a sudden I switched over to your side, and then, and that that doomed your argument. But uh, mm-hmm. anyway, no, I didn't. I no, we weren't in agreement. It was me and Ergo, and then I switched. <laughs> so I failed. Well, here's round two of this because there's actually a uh, court hearing uh, coming up soon, um, covering exactly what we were talking about. Um, this former medical technician. I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name. Uh, Don Marie, Shows, I don't know, whatever. Uh, she was fired for using vulgar language, criticizing her boss on Facebook after he de- denied one of her requests. Um, after she did that, a lot, several of her coworkers joined in on the thread, uh, making very similar negative comments about this particular supervisor. Um, she made several comments, uh, Don Marie made several comments um, from her private account and on her own time and her own computer. Well, her employer, which is called uh, Medical or American Medical Response of Connecticut Inc., um, said that her comments constituted online bath- bad mouthing, which violates company policy, um, and they insist that her postings were a, um, uh, a, a how can I put it, um, in, well, violation of the policy. The the defense. Um, Don Marie's defense is basically saying it was a concerted activity and thus protected by employee rights to communicate with one another um, in an effort to improve work conditions. So the lawsuit um, is looking to be this lengthy battle of, uh, you know, 
technology versus you know what employees' rights are, and you know this this hearing you know what's decided could set a precedent for um, what employers what bounds employers have or the limits employers have to you know really regulating and justifying firing suspensions over what's being done online whether it be Facebook Twitter or blogging or anything so mm -hmm. I mean we should really focus this closely because I mean especially with you know businesses coming up with social media policies um, I know I'm a huge proponent of having one and enforcing one and sticking to it um, so uh, you know, I'll be following this closely but, to see what what happens. So Jeff, hold on. Hold what if on. you don't have one in place? And like Linear Pro here said, they just got fired yesterday because of their their vlogs. So if you don't you have a fired, social media like, policy, Linear Pro in the audience in the chat. So if you oh, don't have a social media policy with your company oh, and they fire sad. you, yeah, that is sad. I mean, if 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 they didn't have one with you, I mean, is that still something that you can do? What, what sue, sue them? No, what I'm saying is, okay, they got fired yesterday. Yeah. Because of their vlogs. I'm not sure if there was a social media policy in place, but if there isn't one in place, <coughs> can you really fire somebody and with that being reason? <coughs> well, see, this is the thing. And I, you know, V, um, uh, who, who said this again? Uh, Linear it? Pro. Linear Pro. You know, I'm not, I don't, you know the situation I don't you know I want to speak on your behalf but you know, you know the way we view it at our business is if someone's bad mouthing the company online um, it's no different than if they were at you know the middle of the grocery store and stood up and just started bad mouthing the company in front of everybody like right then and there or mm -hmm. you know stood up in the middle of the company office and just started bad mouthing everyone there and just being you know completely um, inappropriate and and just you know flat out saying they hate life like hate the job this that or the other and criticizing that we we don't view it any different so I mean you know especially online or Facebook where you have a, a reach which is much larger than the audience you probably have you know in front of you right there so I think you know as the article states I think it's the law really not keeping up with technology and that you know technology has um, you know, really, it's really reshape, reshaping what we think of and how we think of an employee. You know, are you an employee just from nine to five? Or are you an employee 24 seven and the ramifications of what you do on your personal life? Um, you know, what you do in your personal life has ramifications on your in your profession, professional life. So it was actually brought up um, in the chat here um, that the, you can basically get fired legally for anything, any reason at all, uh, if you're in what's called an at-will state, which basically I think means, I don't know, they, you can leave at any time, the, uh, the employer can let you go at any time, and it, it, there's only se uh, seven states that don't have that type of a thing. So it, it looks like um, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, <laughs> Maine, Nebraska, New York, Rhode Island, and Florida, except for they have some exceptions. Um, other yeah. than, uh, if you're in one of those states, you can't really get fired for random reasons. But every other state, it looks like they let you get fired for anything. And Linear Pro, we're sorry we got yeah. you got fired, man. We hope you you were able to find employment as quickly as possible. And uh, he's definitely. in Canada um, also. Linear Pro's in my province. Yeah, so man, we we hope uh, everything's all right on your end. We hope you uh, you know. We we pray for you and uh, you know hopefully you can find something here soon. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Well, the, now that that moment of silence is over, yeah, definitely. So here's the here's your situation. If um, you, you said it had something to do with the blog, if you're tech savvy and you're you're blogging, you're you're out there. Um, I don't want to, you know, give any false hope, but let's face it, you're already ahead of the game. And uh, you know, with the with the worldwide economy rebounding, um, hop on LinkedIn, hop on Facebook, look around. If you have if you're in social media, depending on what fields you're in, go to go to Mashable. I actually get get a lot of the stuff. <laughs> it's funny. Speaking of uh, speaking of that stuff, it's popping up on my screen now. A lot of stuff that we get comes from Mashable and uh, and TechCrunch. There's lots out there. Um, yeah, stay positive, move forward, and uh, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, all right, cool. 
Uh, so, so be careful what you say. We'll be watching this closely. Uh, if this, if this does turn out to, because this is going to set a precedent in a lot of ways. So, regardless of which way this goes, we'll be reporting it here on Social Blade. Um, this is big news. So, so we'll be we'll be keeping track of it. Uh, more big news <clears throat> in the world of videos. Uh, just this amazing stack. Can we put the stat up on the screen, Ergo? We have it up or on the, the screen. Uh, or... The infographic. Yep. Okay, cool. I can't see. It's left. so. There goes. So they put out this infographic, and, and <coughs> keep in mind, I love infographics. For those who don't know, I post at least two or three infographics um, a day to my various blogs. I actually made my very first infographic yesterday, and I am pleased to announce that it got picked up on Boing Boing and Raw Story of all places. Um, very odd. Uh, and, and I got a lot of abuse because I used the uh, papyrus font, but I digress. So... <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, they killed me on that one. They were just ripping. So, luckily, this uh, this much more professionally done Mashable graphic, as you can see, is uh, they do not use Papyrus font. They have some amazing data that will probably, probably su surprise you. Some of it is, um, you know, pretty much common sense. Shorter is better. Ergo has been preaching this for years. He is our, our local YouTube expert, and he knows that, that you know, 15, 20, 30, 50, uh, I'm sorry, 60-second spots are, are your best bet to be able to get views, obviously. Um, once you get over a minute, your your percentage drops dramatically. You go to two to two to five minutes, and you're lucky to get them to view it. You go over five minutes, and you're you know it's not going to happen. The Social Blade Show, we get a lot of visitors to our videos, but we usually only get um, because they're an hour long and won't register as a view unless they they watch. I believe it's 75 percent of the video, which means that they have to sit there. If they click away after 45 minutes or before the 45 minute mark, they don't count as a view. So we get hundreds, even though we know that thousands are watching it. So, um, so yeah, shorter is better. Facebook dominates, another no-brainer. Um, I didn't know that it dominated this much. They're showing that 76% that share videos on Facebook versus 15% via email, which I don't know who those people are, <laughs> and then 9% via Twitter, which... That surprises um, me there. Right? Well, no, no, no. So, so I what guess there's just more people I think, doing it. Exactly. It's just, you know, what I would... Yeah, it's this is an unfair statistic. I would say that more videos actually get shared, or not more videos, but a, but more than nine percent get shared on Twitter versus seventy six percent on Facebook. But you've got um, approaching six hundred million uh, yeah. users on Facebook versus uh, approaching two hundred million on Twitter. So anyway, so that's that's a misleading stat, but it is true. Facebook does dominate. Now this part we're going to skip because this one's a little bit more. The uh, CPGs lead the way. I want to get back to that one last. Um, women. Uh, girls and Generation Y are the two most dominant uh, aspects uh, as far as video sharing going viral. They're watching the most videos, and that is uh, that's you know, definitely yeah, no surprising. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what you expect. Now, this one blew my mind. I've lived on the West Coast. I've lived on the East Coast. I've lived in the South. I've lived in the Midwest. Okay. And if you had asked me yesterday which order it would go as far as the predominance of watching videos, I would have said it would go West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, South. And I would have been almost exactly entirely wrong. <laughs> the South leads the way as far as people watching. And the Midwesterners are the ones that are sharing the videos. Go figure. I don't, I don't, I, I want to look more into this because it still doesn't quite compute. But I guess, you know, Ergo watches a lot of videos. And even though he's East Coast, he's in the Southeast Coast. Yeah, it's, it's because he so can't read. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. No, that's why I listen. To, <laughs> Jeff, that's why I listen to audiobooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have you gotta to, break things down Barney style when you're talking to him. He's telepathic. He just he just taps directly into the author's minds. So um, so the last part of their email on the east, uh, you know, again, are, are people really still emailing? Really? Um, yes. <laughs> I don't. I mean, not videos. I mean, I know people are using email, but do you? Do you uh, take videos and email them to people? Actually, it, it, surprisingly, I get a lot of forwards from people emailing me videos from uh, coworkers need, from my last company. So you it surprises you. You need to leave that. Oh, you already did. Yeah, good, I did. You, good thing. <laughs> now, let's go back up here because this is the one that, that that shocked me. I mean, this 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 really blew me away. Consumer packaged goods (CPGs). Uh, consumer packaged goods companies are leading the way in the social video charge. CPG companies are driving nearly 19% more social video views than consumer electronics, of all things, retail, and media and entertainment brands combined. So what's CPG? Break it down. What is an example of a CPG? Um, 
see. <laughs> I've got to look it up. What is a oh, consumer <laughs> bin? <laughs> Well, no, no, I, I mean, is I that like is. a TV it's, dinner or something, or like what are we talking about? Something good. It's okay. So so let's go to Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, it, it says right there: consumer clothing, there, tobacco, yeah. and household products. Clothing, no, that's there we go. Exactly. that's the electronics so, yeah. one. Okay. Well, no, but not necessarily the electronics aspect of it. This is we're talking about about basically, and it's it's just as consumer packaged goods. Um, like you said, TV dinners, groceries. Uh, this would also include, you know, getting getting your Pepsi, getting your 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 Hanes underwear, getting your your whatever it is that you're getting that doesn't fall into the other the other areas, which is a lot. Though, you know, it it gets there because of sheer mass. But but the fact that it's over 19 percent more than than consumer electronics, which we know that we know that's huge in social media, or at least we thought it was. Retail. And media and entertainment brands combined blows me away. Now, keep in mind, this isn't that people are tweeting about. Um, it, it, it does go back to the size of the companies as well. This isn't because, pardon me, this isn't just um, uh, that they're tweeting about Coca-Cola, um, but they might be, you know, there's a lot of tweets going around. Gap. Um, Gap. No, Gap. Well, like Gap, not... Starbucks, that type of stuff. No, no, so no, no, don't forget, don't forget. So, so consumer packaged goods, Gap would fall under retail. Um, yeah. Some the the, pa the stuff that you get at the Gap, not the Gap products themselves, but let's say you buy buy again Hanes underwear at the Gap. The retailers aren't getting the play. It's the actual items that they're selling that that are getting most of the play, and that's the part that, that that's blowing a lot of people away. It blew blew me away. Now, what does this mean though? All it means is that you know what what they're what people are looking at um, when you know they're going to these videos. They're actually looking for comparisons. They're looking for 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 entertainment, and they're looking for you know a lot of this stuff gets displayed via video and marketed through video um, in a way that that uh, will generate views. For Just as an example, um, and I'm trying to think of a good one. Um, oh, perfect one. Okay. So last night we were watching a video about a dehydrator, okay? Um, a dehydrator? You know, just looking at... Looking at dehydrating vegetables and stuff like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Someone dehydrating themselves. <laughs> no, no, no. Like a, like a, you know, food, food savers. You know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, you know, great for making, great for making, um, you know, taking, taking, getting, getting food in bulk and, and taking it and getting ready, ready for soup and all that good stuff. Um, but we ended up watching between me and my wife. We watched for probably about an hour. I think she watched a lot longer than I did. Um, I actually went to bed before she did because she was watching this stuff, and that would fall into that 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 category of. Oh. Uh, and we were know. looking at it. It's it's called an earthquake. It's funny because this was this was not. Keep in mind, this is not the, the the brand itself. Okay, this is not the company who produced this stuff. This was a lady in her kitchen, and it's funny because you see the first video that she makes, and it's like okay, so it, so it's pretty good. You know, she's 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 doing it. She's got her husband helping, and um, she's sitting there. <clears throat> excuse me. You know, just in normal clothes and, and blah, blah, blah. And then you go to the set, you know, and you see you got 50,000 views. You go to the second video, there's music added, and she's got makeup on. And then you go to the third video, and she's starting to get political as she's talking about this stuff. And you realize, you know, Tammy said, uh, Tammy said, you know what happened? One of her kids said, hey, Ma, you got 10,000 views. You, you got something here. Let me, let me, let me help you out here. <laughs> and put, they put some, like, uh, some cool, cool music to it, and then. And, and you know, she's all dressed up and looking looking sharp, and it was a, just just a very fun stuff to watch. But we spent over an hour watching these consumer packaged goods videos, um, not watching you know about the iPhone or anything like that. We're watching we're watching a lady show us how to how to dehydrate carrots, which when you take a carrot this big and you dehydrate it, it shrinks down to like literally this big. It's like it's like all water. It's amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, you can catch that on DVD in two weeks. <laughs> I was, was going to say, uh, for my product, for my consumer product videos, or my, uh, uh, what do we call them? What do we call them? CPGs? Is that right? Consumer packaged goods, yes. Exactly. I go to item C. Ooh. Now that's I T E M S E A dot com. And that is run by you. Our great uh, co-host here, Jason Ergo, <laughs> and uh, he does a fantastic job of um, really breaking down and showing. Uh, yeah, but not really. The greatest, latest, and greatest products there are mm -hmm. in the uh, out there. 
Yeah, I don't have any consumer package. Go- well, no, maybe I do, but um, there yeah. you go, Google TV. He oh, broke he down an NSX 46 GTI 46 <laughs> inch 1080p 60 hertz LED HD TV <laughs> Google TV. That is about to be the most complex title I've yeah. ever heard. <laughs> Why not just Sony Google TV? <laughs> Okay. What's the full product name so people can search for it? This awesome video. Oh, yo, what's the title? Uh, (laughs) Sony (laughs) SX3. Takes. I think we need to have. I think we need to have a thing here on Social Blade, where we review. You know, at the end of the year, we we nominate like the top ten like craziest titles that we find on the blog, the the stories that we cover throughout the year, and then we, we select one. That is our 2010 Social Blade title of the year. I I think that one would be our first nomination. (laughs) Sounds good. Hmm. (laughs) All right. And on that bombshell, (laughs) I think it's time to end. I think so. (laughs) I think think we're ready. All right, beautiful. Um, Guys, thank you. And thank you for being patient, for, for sticking with us, even though we were... We were late. Um, you guys are just just a fantastic, great audience. Again, uh, make sure that you you get us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You know where to go. Just put a Facebook or a social blade at the end. I want to talk a little bit about this. Uh, we are looking for more guests, and what we really want are introductions, if possible. Please, um, if you know somebody who who would you know who would be good on the show, and that could be you, by the way. You can you can always recommend yourself as a guest. Me? But if you know somebody. It could be you, Ergo. Oh, cool. He's, I told you, he's telepathic. So if you if you know somebody and you can make the introduction, you know, making recommendations is fine. What we really want you to do, if possible, is to to say, hey, I know, uh, I know this guy. Uh, his name is Mark Zuckerberg, and I'd like, you know, he's my <laughs> he's my cousin, and he, I think I can get him on the show. If you can do that, or anybody it doesn't have to be he's Mark your Zuckerberg. Cousin? Not Matt Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, Mark. yeah. So somebody that you think would be a good guest on the show. Obviously, they have to be social media related in some way. They don't have to. They don't have to be like social media experts, social media gurus, but they have to be doing something pretty, pretty fun or pretty amazing or pretty interesting on social media. Uh, if you know these people, you can make the introduction. Please go to our site, socialblade.com/show, and up there you'll see suggest a guest. Click on that and tell us all about it. You can also see our past shows, past videos. And um, and past broadcasts done, uh, as well as read our blog post and uh, about social media done social blade style. So uh, so yeah, go to j.mp/subus if you want SMS alerts. That is j.mp/subus. You can get to know all the amazing brands. Brands. Sorry, I'm stuck on consumer brands. Uh, video stuck. Okay, erasing. Restarting. j.mp/subus to get SMS SMS alerts. About our uh, about our, our own show as well as other shows like Ask Outcast at 8 p.m. Eastern, Band on the Web, 10 p.m. Eastern, and the Drill Down at 9:30 Eastern, which I was late for last night. Very embarrassingly, slept through bad stuff. Um, if you are on YouTube, and I know we cover YouTube a lot, guys, go to socialblade.com/youtube. You check out the YouTube stats thingy that that Ergo's put together. <coughs> it is sick. It is amazing, and I mean they're talking about it in different languages. It's so. Cool. Um, it is. We had we had a we had a, a burst. Uh, we, I was look, trying to figure out how to translate German because um, it was just it was we were we were all uh, some people are huge in uh, Japan we were, we're huge in Germany yeah. yes we are we we there's there's uh, there's David Hasselhoff and then there's Social Blade is the two biggest things from America in Germany right now as well as Canada because we do have Aaron Ryan um, <laughs> yeah great show tonight guys I we love you and next week we will not be having a show unfortunately. Uh, both Ergo, both Ergo and myself will be will be either in the air or or somewhere. I'll be up in San Francisco. Ergo's going to be in Phoenix, Phoenix Arizona, mm-hmm. and um, and so so yes. Yeah, so next week we're taking taking a break, but when we return, we have uh, some 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 news. Uh, we're working on on some new things that we're not going to divulge today, but we will be divulging them in two Big weeks. Big stuff and coming guys, soon. Big stuff, big stuff. Expansion of the show in a ways that you guys are going to love. And no, that doesn't mean that the show is going to get longer. So don't worry about that. Just, uh, just <laughs> more of a reach. <laughs> it will not be ending at 11.30 Eastern time in, in the future like it is today. But 
But um, we're going to be doing a 24 hour show. We're actually we're starting at 12 o'clock noon. We're doing 12 to 3, so you can watch us during your work hours. No, not 12 to 3, 12 to 12. And that's AM to AM. Live, 24 7. 7. No. <laughs> coast to coast. Exactly. Coast to coast, live. Actually, live. coast to the, like, like, coast to all the way back to the same coast if we want to go worldwide. It is the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mike Singer is no.com. <laughs> exactly. Um, but even when we do go long, even when the uh, when the night is 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 waning and the early morning hours are creeping upon you, and you're wondering how long is JD going to do this this last piece, <laughs> just to get to those last words. Just just always remember, when you're alone and scared in the dark, that we are social blade.